Yuma's life, and the militia fleet is running low. Only seven planets in the Yuma system can replenish a fleet of that size. This is one of them. We've set up turrets like this one, just in case the militia decide to pay this site a visit. That's Charlie, this one's Bravo. Bravo, give me a sip rep. Turret online and operational, sir. What's up, all great? Zulu 3 shows multiple jump signatures. Three clicks out. Bliss, tell Briggs to get his squad on the deck now. Sir, our forces have assembled at Renning Point Delta. Pilots, today you have a chance to establish peace on the frontier. Make it count. So, Titanfall has officially been released for the Xbox and the PC. So in this video I thought I'd give you guys my thoughts, I've had a few goes, I've had an awesome round like I did here, uh, ending up with an awesome KD, which uh, I always like to have. Um, but anyways, so basically in this mode, uh, hardpoint domination, you're going to be trying to capture these, um, these little points, these capture points, just like in any other game, battlefield, battlefront, it's all the same stuff. Um, but basically, I thought I'd give you guys sort of my feelings towards the game right now. So basically, if you're wondering if there's a single player, the answer is yes and no. So basically, the way the single player works is, as you saw in the intro to this video, you'll be in sort of this little gunship-like thing, and you'll sort of be briefed by this commander, admiral, captain guy, and he'll sort of tell you what's going on, and that's sort of what progresses the story. There's no dedicated single player in this game. Uh, when you play, you're always going to be playing with other players, and obviously the grunts, which are controlled by AI. So whether you like that or not, it's just a matter of fact thing, that's the way this game operates, that's the way the single player works, and that's the way the story progresses. So uh, my, th my opinion on that is uh, it actually seems to work sort of well, it's, it's pretty, it's, it, it keeps you interested, uh, you don't get sort of this dull combat that you get with a lot of AI in a lot of games, in Battlefront, in Battlefield, I mean. Uh, in Call of Duty, all those games, the AI sort of gets stale after a while. As, as awesome as the story is, I enjoy the story in uh, Call of Duty, in, um, in Battlefield, uh, sort of. Anyways, uh, the, the story is really what players want to see in a campaign-driven mode to a game. So in this game, I think they've sort of realized that AI sort of gets stale after a while. And so I think that when you do have these multiplayer matches that progress the story, it's something new and it's something uh, I, I think was employed pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, I mean, you don't get quite the, the same sense of immersion that you may in a truly single player game, but uh, it, it works for Titanfall. But because of that, because there's sort of a limit, these are only multiplayer maps. Now, I believe there's about 15 maps in total. And of course, I haven't played them all, um, but I have played a majority of them, and they're really well-designed maps. They're balanced. Uh, they just flow. They they make it so you can flow in between Titan combat and pilot combat really seamlessly. Okay, so you're going to be seeing uh, wide open areas, yet those wide open areas are also sprinkled with a lot of cover. Okay, so Titans are not overpowered. Uh, I mean, if you watch anybody on YouTube, if you watch anybody playing this game, they're going to tell you, uh, a majority of them are going to tell you the same thing. The, the Titan combat isn't overpowered because pilots have so many tools at their advantage. You can rodeo Titans, you can have your Titan go after them while you're a pilot, you can be in your Titan while you're a pilot, you can use your anti-Titan weapons, the list goes on. Okay, so there's a lot of variety in this game. Now where I find that that variety sort of teeters off is in the customization. I find that having only three titans and a limited number of customizations for the weapons for those titans, as well as even for pilots, pilots have such limited customization. So for example, you have maybe, I want to say there's maybe around 10 weapons or so, uh, main, major weapons that you can use as a pilot, primary weapons. Okay, but in those primary weapons, maybe you have three different types of scopes. Uh, maybe you have, uh, you know, three different types of, you know, barrels or something like that. Okay, there's not much customization in this game, and that's where I think it sort of it sort of loses its appeal. People like to see a lot of customization these days. Now, that being said, I don't want to see something that copies Battlefield 4's sort of 
way of dealing with weapons. What Battlefield 4 has is they have maybe 12 or so weapons in each category. You might have 12 LMGs, 12 assault rifles, and so on. So that's great and all, but then maybe you'll only use two or three of those weapons, and the rest you'll never use because they just don't fit into the game. They're not good. The other ones are so much better than those. So when you have something like that, there's no purpose to having those nine extra guns if you're only going to use the three. So if that's what Titanfall is trying to do, they're only giving you three Titans. That maybe they're doing that on purpose so that they avoid that. But either way, it would be nice to see some variety. Why not add something new? Something like a weapon that shoots electricity bolts. Something that fits into the lore, but yet is original and new. Just seeing variety with the types of weapons just sort of keeps the, the game fresh. Uh, you don't want to see people using the same weapons over and over again. It's going to get old real fast. So I hope that they address this. But I don't know what's going to happen in future updates and future DLCs for this game. So uh, as I said, the maps are pretty pretty awesome. Uh, the guns are awesome. Oh, I completely forgot about the maps. There's environmental like things that happen. Like there's animals. There's dragons in one map. There's there's just all sorts of things that you're going to see in the maps in Titanfall, and so that helps uh, with the immersion factor of things. Um, so it's yeah, maps really awesome. But yet for a game that's still 60 US dollars, I don't I don't think it's worth it at this point. So as as fun as you know, as much fun as I'm having with it, I think this is a wonderful game. I don't think it's worth the sixty dollars. In fact I don't think a lot of games are worth the sixty dollars. But this one in particular, it feels more like a thirty or forty dollar game. Now why is that? Because basically if you watch anybody on YouTube or Twitch or anything, you watch people playing or you play yourself, you quickly realize that there's a limit in the, the type of gameplay you're going to get out of this game. There's, I mean, there's Pilot, there's Titan, but that's, that's about it. These maps, as I said, they're, they're really fun maps, but they all feel in terms of their size, in terms of the way they play, they feel very similar if not the same. So. It's, it's sort of hard to describe, you sort of have to play it for yourself or recognize it, but they they have a certain uniformity that games like Battlefield, uh, they, they don't have. Battlefield, you're going to have this variety. Maybe you'll be in a jet, maybe you'll you know go on top of this skyscraper, uh, I mean things like that. There's no skyscrapers really in Titanfall. When you're playing, it's going to be very sort of 2D. Uh, you're gonna be, I mean, this, this is sort of funny to say since there's a lot of parkour elements where you can sort of go jumping off walls and things like that. And I guess in the Angel City map, which you could actually play in the beta, if you sort of master the movement mechanisms in this game, you can sort of hop on your way up to the top of this building. And if you've got the longbow DMR sniper rifle in this game, you can take people out pretty easily. Even with the assault rifle, you can still sort of snipe people from range. But the thing is, this game just feels like it, something you would play for maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months, have a lot of fun with it. But I can't see myself getting as much into it as I have in prior Battlefield games, Star Wars games, things like that. It just doesn't have a certain something that makes you want to keep coming back for more. I think that one of the most appealing things, one of the reasons why this game's maybe been getting a bunch of hype, is because it is so polished. You look at this game, everything runs so smoothly. So in terms of the smoothness factor, the balancing of things, uh, as a, now that doesn't include the smart pistol. Now the smart pistol, uh, there's a lot of people that have differing opinions about it. I'm not quite sure whether or not I'm okay with it or not. Because I recognize that it does take three seconds or so to lock onto a player. So for a good player, that's plenty of time to turn around and you know kill that person. So maybe what they need to in implement, which I've heard a lot of people talking about, is maybe some sort of alarm or alert system that lets you know that you're being locked on to. Because right now the smart pistol just sort of rewards the unskilled player. It doesn't really give them any incentive to try to use a different weapon that's harder to use. So I, I'm always, you know, I'm pretty skeptical of things like that. I'm, I'm always for like learning curves. I enjoy games that have uh, you know, a steep learning curve, any type of learning curve, as long as you have this sense of reward. And I feel like the smart pistol sort of defeats that and sort of spits in its face. And yeah, not cool. So the smart pistol probably needs some balancing. Other than that, as I said, everything feels really balanced. The thing that seems to be missing now is content. 
and maybe we'll be seeing that in the form of the season pass uh, deluxe editions things like that but then again I'm I'm very much against those because I feel like if you're already paying sixty dollars for a game like this and you already feel like you're being gypped on in terms of content that's not when you want to be asking people to shovel out more money for more content it really should have more content in the base game so I, that's my opinion about it but if you guys are really interested in this game uh, I highly recommend that you guys check it out um, but as I said I would probably wait for it to go on sale on Origins hold on one sec Rodeo! Oh, I do think that for a majority of this gameplay session I sort of forgot about the Titan. I was just having so much fun with the gunplay. I sort of forgot. I have Titans that I can use. But as you guys have seen in this game, the gunplay is so fun. I, I do hope they'll add more modes because there is sort of not that many modes. It's basically just attrition and that's the main mode I see other people playing. I see myself playing. Uh, so uh, once again, that just goes under the whole thing with the lack of content I feel there is in this game. They just there's a limit in modes, there's a limit in things like that. But there's a lot of room for awesome tactics and awesome reflex shots. As you saw there, when I called in my Titan there, I sort of called it in there on purpose because when you call in your Titan, you'll notice that there's sort of this shield, this barrier thing that sort of sits around your Titan for a short amount of time. So I do recognize that there is a lot of room for awesome tactics if you know how to try to use the mechanics of the game to your advantage. Uh, you can also make titans fall on other titans. I'm pretty sure it blows them up. I haven't been able to do it myself. Sounds like you can actually do that. So we basically run the round here and we're just trying to sort of spit in their face by uh, halting their escape. But basically this video is coming to a close. Let me know what you guys think about this game though. I'm interested to see what the general consensus is about it. It seems to actually be growing more negative and negative as sort of the, the potential that this game had in the beginning sort of seems to dwindle down. So let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys next time.